Well, you see, what happens in the world is that the woman at least ends up with a drive for family. And that eclipses the husband to some extent, you know, children and God. The physical circumstances of the family dominate. She realizes, of course, that the care of the family is greatly influenced by the care of her husband. So he's now instrumental in what she's purposing, whereas before she may have just been in love with him. Before that she may have been in love with God. She may not. If she puts the children first, then of course she's put the husband at least second, and God also second. And who is third? Well, whatever. Probably God is third because she's seeing husband as the, the provider for the family. The husband ideally takes a sort of long-term view while she's bringing up children. Of course she's got to concentrate on the children. And uh, she'll return to me in the fullness of time. <laughs> and hopefully she does. <laughs> when they get old enough to jump the nest, so to speak. At least in, in the demands and importance upon her. Do you see how the scriptural thing comes that it's he's for God and she's for God in him that in this what would have been typical religious type secular world <laughs> I don't know how to say it really quite and it would be varied but She values God through him and through her children being provided by him and, and supported and so on. To the extent that being a mum dominates. He, of course, because uh, of diminished priority in her eyes, ideally holds the more to God. And if he does, the marriage holds. Now, I don't mean this may be, you know, overtly Christian God, but godly principles, godly values. He's, he's, he, he abides his time and he's, he's, grace, he's, he's graceful about it and accepts that, you know, obviously we, we need her to concentrate on the kids, not me. Of course, if he's not of that opinion, he might simply start looking around for a, uh, a way out of the situation. And that's rather sad. To the extent that she is not too godly, she may realize there are better options than her husband for looking after her children and family. And she may even see the state as a better option if um, she really has lost it as regards caring and valuing the husband. So she might chuck him out or leave and, and see what it is like coping in the world. Perhaps she's a professional woman, but that's of course difficult now because I mean, she's going to have to be a professional woman and, and caring for the family and it all gets a bit much, rather more than she expected, typically. Or of course she just finds someone else who she feels is better in some sense. 
So what's the ideal? Well, the ideal is always putting God first. So let's let's tack it from that point of view. Both partners put God first. Well, right. right. not clear they even get married. <laughs> Don't even bother to meet. <laughs> well, they do because, well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> they love each other as well good now look you've got to put God first I know that's hard because you've fallen in love with each other but if you don't put God first your love will not last the bond will not last you might just about limp on long enough to hold children together but not, not so good. So somehow you have to find a marriage, if you are going to have marriage and kids, which it looks like you are. You're going to have to do it by keeping God first. That's paramount. To love each other in the context of loving God first. Can you do that? If you can, gosh, you're one in a million. You really are. <laughs> Bless you. Try that for all it's worth. <laughs> hmm. Let me think a sec. Look, I've been married three times. I can't honestly say I speak from experience. And three would hardly be a big enough sample, would it? Uh, too much, of course. I mean, one marriage might be uh, all that's wanted, yes. It really is the case that if you're going to lose putting God first, don't get married. If marriage is going to be such a temptation to you that you're going to put not put God first, You've just sacrificed eternal life, haven't you? At least for the time being. You'll be reliant on the grace of God giving you another opportunity, of course. <laughs> Somewhere in the future. <laughs> mm. It looks like the easy way out, you know, Paul's thing, if you burn, well, you better get married and so on, have a family, but having a family and being married and so on is treacherous as regards keeping God first. It's giving maximum temptation to put the family first. And perhaps you should, I don't know. It occurs to me that perhaps you should. And perhaps you can rally after the family is provided for and come back to putting God first, both of you. And holding for the rest of life in loving companionship with each other. Hmm. I think I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs>